Hello guys, thanks for joining me again today. I have a fan over here, so I'm sorry if it's interrupting the my mic, <laughs> basically. So today is going to be a Bible study type day, and I'm going to talk about fear. I wanted to talk about fear mainly because God's been putting this on my heart so much. I have, um, how do I say this? So here's how I'm going to say it, because this is the only way I can think of. Fear stops us from making decisions. No, fear stops us from doing things that we ought to do. Fear changes our decisions. It, it corrupts them for the idea that we would be safer. Or for the idea that we would do it better, or be better, or have better, or do better. Whatever it is. Fear corrupts. And this is a problem that I have been personally facing, so I'm just going to tell you my 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 story. <laughs> so this is basically this. So I have a lot of problem. I've had a lot of problems with abuse in my life. Some of it I brought on myself. Some of it uh, I was born into, and some of it uh, I married into. <laughs> so. And this is not my husband, to be clear. I do not like the way that his, my in-laws treat us, all right? And that is basically, you know, they think they know what's best and they think they're, that initially this is how we, how it was treated. It's not so bad now, but initially, you know, um, his parents believe that, that you can just, because he's their son they can do whatever they want. Then they don't have to ask. They don't have to wonder about what his opinion is. Even right now, as a married man with his own household. Uh, it's very hurtful to me that they would treat him in this way. And then also treat me in this way. Now, I was not raised that way. I was raised to be very independent from the time of six years old. I was like making my my siblings, you know, peanut butter jelly sandwiches, I would get them dressed, I would give them baths, things like that. Now, I understand that not everyone is raised that way and that some people might think that's a little extreme, but that's the way it is. So I'm very independent sometimes to my own detriment. But one of the things I fear is getting hurt by people again. I went into this marriage believing that, okay, these are my parents now, you know, I have you know, these are my parents because they're his parents. And when you're married, you're one. So this is a mom and dad that I have that hopefully be better than my mom and dad, you know, <laughs> and uh, would treat me with uh, more respect than like my parents did when I was younger. So that is not what happened, though. In in many ways, they are they are very abusive also, but it's in the way of you don't think for yourself. You don't have to have an opinion. You don't have to do this, that, or the other. Uh, I will do it for you. Okay. And that to me is a form of abuse. When you just do everything for your kid, you just, you know, you're the one who, who makes decisions for him, for him, et cetera. And that's very hurtful. We are able to make our own decisions and uh, it has caused a rift between us. And part of the reason why I cannot just let it go and forgive, and this is something I realized recently, is that I am afraid they're going to turn right back to their other ways and begin to do this again. Okay, so this is a great fear that I have because in my lifetime, whenever I was abused before and I would forgive, be like, yeah, it's fine, whatever. I'm just going to let it go and not talk about it. Then it happened again. So these things have caused me to go against what God says as far as forgiveness. In the Lord's Prayer, it talks about how you are to forgive people the way you want God to forgive you. It talks also in the Bible about whenever, well, how many times should I forgive someone? He goes 70 times seven, right? That's over and over. You just do it. The The guidelines also are if someone comes to you and say that you have hurt them, then you apologize and you work it out. 
It's not, well, you don't deserve the apology or I should never apologize to you. And it is also, excuse me, sorry, that that person who's hurt is supposed to say something. So I failed on that front because I never really said anything. I didn't never really like sat him down and was like, look, we're adults. We're, we, we need to make our own decisions. I never did that. So that's a failing on my part. Um, uh, and it was based on fear. It was based on, you know, I'm going to say this and they're just not going to listen because of stuff I've been through in the past. So fear caused me to make an incorrect decision because I listened to it. In the Bible, it talks about fear a lot. Do not be afraid because God is with you. Go out and do the work that, that you are supposed to do and just don't fear. Don't fear death. Don't fear dismemberment. Don't fear pain because you're protected. And the one that I liked the most when I was looking it up, okay, is First Chronicles 28.20. And it says, David also said to Solomon, his son, be strong and courageous and do the work. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the temple of the Lord is finished. All right. So when God has something for you, he's not just going to like leave you out there whenever it's dangerous. I know that sounds like, oh, okay, so when the work's done, you're on your own. No, <laughs> no, uh, no. So the work of a Christian is to go out and proclaim the gospel to do that. The work of a Christian is to do what God tells you to do in your relationships. The work of a Christian is to be living this life, to making the decisions based on what God says, not based on our emotions like fear. And uh, in my last video, I was talking about how I think making law based on emotion is stupid. And the reason I think that is because emotions change. Emotions a lot of times are based on fear or pride or, or those things. And so the decisions that you make are going to be wrong most of the time. So in looking at this, when I look at things like when, when the, when the liberals left us progressives, whatever you want to call them, I would even say classical liberals go to make law. A lot of times it's based on an emotion that they're having. It's not based on any kind of facts. It's not based on anything that, other than we feel bad about this or we don't think that should happen, that's not justice. So our, our, our response is to have another emotion rule it. And then that law doesn't make any sense because then that law causes other problems. So in a way, I was acting like a liberal, <laughs> just being angry and being upset. And you can't continue to live that way. At a certain point, as an individual, you have to say, I'm going to do the right thing. I'll do the thing I'm supposed to do. And it's very difficult because of the, because of the abuse I've had in the past, it's very easy for me to put up a wall and just say, done with you. And that's not right. It's not done with you. It's pray for you. It's treat you well. Because then at that point, you know, you could even say, you could even look at it like this, where they're your enemy. So what does God say about that? Pray for them, do well to them. Um, you know, those kinds of, those types of things. So no matter if you're an enemy or you're a friend, I'm supposed to pray for you, do good to you and go from there. Right? So this is the thing that has stopped me from doing what God said to do. Stop me from being a good and faithful servant like I'm supposed to. And that is something else that people don't talk about too much as far as, Christianity is concerned. People either want to look at it as, well, I'm a Christian, so I can do what I want because I'm forgiven. Or they look at it like, well, no, you can't do anything you want. And here's all these rules on top of the rules you were given. It's like, no, um, you know what to do because it's in the Bible. And if you have some sort of idea of how to do it, but you're not sure, guess what? God speaks to you through the Holy Spirit. So just go talk to him. One of the things in this example he told me to do is to just smile at them. Now, I, I very initially, the first time he told me that was like, no, we're going to have to figure out something else I can do because that's a negatory. <laughs> I don't appreciate people who treat me like a child, who treat me like I can't, you know, take care of myself. 
so, but what I'm going to do is smile at them. I'm going to find some time to do that. And uh, we'll see what happens from there. Uh, I have a hard time, because I'm introverted, I guess, I sometimes have a hard time doing this thing where, like, when people do something, I'm in shock at first, and then I'm like, no, they didn't. <laughs> so, and then I don't want to come afterwards and be like, look, you really don't do this again, kind of thing, because, well, why didn't you say something? Because I was in shock that you would do such a thing, right? Uh, in the South, they have a lot of weird rules, and I'm not Southern. <laughs> I'm from the West, and they have different rules, different social rules. They have different social expectations out there. So I've gotten in trouble before by being upfront with things. So now I'm in this quagmire of I'm not sure what to do. But it's not an excuse, okay? It all I would have to do is go to God and pray about it or ask them or say, look, I don't understand what had just happened there, but blah, right? <laughs> All I had to do was open my mouth and I didn't do it because I instead listened to fear. So don't let fear destroy things, guys. I, I think that on top of pride and all these other things, it is one of the things that the devil uses a lot to make us make decisions one way or the other. I, things like insurance, and I'll have it over here somewhere, this insurance picture that I have, that says, we're here to help you with your fear, to keep you, you know, to, to keep you calm or whatever. You know, you're afraid of what's going to happen. So we're going to make it awesome for you. You can't actually do that. You, when I am in the midst of my fear, an insurance company is not what comforts me. <laughs> Uh, people use fear all the time in politics as well on both sides. Well, we can't have that because this or that or the other will happen. They're going to take this from you. They're going to destroy this or whatever. And when, when a politician does that, we have to question and we have to look and say, well, is that really the case? Is that really true? Are they really going to do that? And we have to pray about it and we have to look at what's real. We have to look at reality. And that is the thing that bothers me the most about this uh, children being separated and all this. What What is reality is not being uh, reported by either side. The right basically reacts to the left and only puts out enough information to go, no, they're wrong. <laughs> so we, as people, have to go, okay, so this is probably happening, but it's happened before. So why are the left reacting like this? Why is the right not saying truth? Because they don't always say the truth, guys. A lot of times, right-leaning stuff is just there to be a pushback to left-leaning stuff. And so we have to be careful about that. We have to say to ourselves, so what is true? What is reality? And that can sometimes be hard to parse. It can be hard to find. So that's really all I wanted to say today guys go forward boldly to Christ and conquer these fears. These are fears I didn't even realize I had and it was buried under some anger that some of it was because of what they done and some of it was just other things that just got buried and, and, and collapsed all on itself and it's just a mess. So <laughs> thank goodness for Christ who can bring us out of that, who can fix it, who can make it but he can restore it, basically, is all I'm trying to say. So that's all I've got for today, guys. This is a Bible-y type thing. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more of what I ramble about, then go ahead and subscribe and join me hopefully tomorrow. I, I am still trying to do this daily. It might be a different background tomorrow or whatever uh, because I might be doing it on my phone. But I am trying to do this daily and just sort of talk about stuff. So... Until tomorrow, guys, remember to pray, read your Bible, and don't fear. Don't fear pain. Don't fear death. Don't fear these things. Jesus Christ is with you at all times. The Holy Spirit is always there, and he is always there to protect you and restore you. All right. Bye, guys.